Hi, uh, Jonathan York, my financial partners, uh, looking at investment markets. Um, quite interesting meeting from the Fed last week. Um, they came out, obviously left rates unchanged. But it's more obviously the uh, sort of commentary that uh, accompanied it. Uh, looking for one rate increase now in 2022. Although from the dot plot, uh, there were three uh, Fed officials that are actually looking for uh, two rate hikes in 2022. And if you extrapolate where rates should be, uh, they imply a rate of around 1.8 now for 2024. What was interesting though, uh, the unemployment uh, was revised up to around sort of 4.8 from 4.5, and inflation was obviously uh, revised up as well. Now looking for a rate of around sort of 4.2, that's up from around 4.3, and still having inflation above uh, 2%, in 2023 and also 2024 as well. GDP gets revised down a little bit to around 5.9 from 7.2 and looking for 3.8 in 2023. So a little bit of a mixed bag there, obviously inflation is still a little bit on the high side. And it's just really interesting to see how this uh, sort of does sort of play through the system. You know, certainly in the moment, the 10 year rate is implying that rates uh, are probably going a little bit higher, um, but also as well that maybe inflation might be a little bit more sticky than uh, first anticipated. Now, if that is the case, obviously it's a little bit nervy uh, time out there for equities. Certainly September hasn't been a great uh, month for equities. But then on the flip side, you look at corporate earnings. Corporate earnings are still pretty strong. Guidance is still reasonable going forward for sort of uh, the end of uh, 2021 and uh, sort of first half of 2022. But obviously that's all really dependent on the sort of COVID and COVID vaccines. Certainly in the US, vaccine rates are pretty good. And it's just a question now of getting those sort of pushed through. And uh, some states even starting to roll out a booster uh, jab as well. But obviously the big test for the markets will be uh, in uh, early October when you see the latest uh, uh, unemployment data. Because uh, certainly September's data was really pretty weak. And if that is a week again, then uh, sort of does uh, uh, sort of throw things up in the air, really. Surprising oil has come back though, and is above by uh, seventy bucks a barrel now on WTI. Now in the UK, just when they thought they were sort of getting through the sort of uh, COVID pandemic and really sort of trying to come out the other side, now being hit with a further issue of uh, uh, petrol shortage. And that's really on, on the back of not uh, uh, supply issues, um, but a really lack of uh, uh, drivers out there to be able to get the petrol from the refineries to the uh, petrol stations. Because at present around 70% of the uh, UK uh, petrol stations have very little or no uh, petrol at all. Now a lot of this has been blamed on Brexit because a lot of the uh, tanker drivers uh, were from uh, uh, European uh, backgrounds. And they've obviously been uh, taken out of the equation um, with uh, the UK's decision to leave Brexit.
So it's just a further issue for the government to try and uh, sort of overcome. And really, they seem to be sort of uh, um, stagnating, really, at present and lacking ideas. And so really, it couldn't have come at a worse time just so the UK was starting to get back on its feet and get a little bit of momentum going on the, uh, on the GDP front. Europe is doing okay, so again, the odd sort of uh, protest about, uh, you know, potential sort of COVID um, passports, etc. For, uh, for big events. Um, but, you know, really looking at it uh, going forward, that appears to be the way. Australia, there appears to be some light at the end of the tunnel now for New South Wales and Victoria. Um, sort of uh, had the, uh, the ground plans laid, if you like, for what's going to happen when they get to uh, certain levels of vaccinations, 80% in uh, New South Wales. They start to relate, uh, relax the uh, restrictions. And likewise for Victoria as well, that's probably a little bit later though, towards probably the end of October. New South Wales is looking like uh, mid-October. Well, on the slight negative side is that uh, there have been a, a couple of cases now that have popped up in Queensland, which really was doing pretty well. Well, so far, I've just got a couple of unidentified uh, uh, cases coming up in Queensland, and that's potentially put a little bit of a spanner in the works. Now, certainly, the Australian GDP will take a little bit of a hit, obviously, in third quarter, and potentially should see a little bit of a pickup, though, in the fourth quarter, and obviously the first, uh, first quarter of uh, 2022. But what it obviously has done is sort of dampened down the you know, expectations from the Reserve Bank of Australia to increase rates. That's now looking more likely to be sort of first half of 2022. But at present, Australia is looking to be on track to have sort of at least 80, 85 percent of the population vaccinated by the end of November. And then potentially with that, they're talking about, uh, you know, sort of relaxing say, restrictions, opening up state borders, but more importantly as well, opening up the international borders as well. Now, if that is the case, that would be a major boost for the Australian economy. Now contrast that with New Zealand, where it's still sort of trying to get vaccinations going forward. It certainly picked up a little bit in the last sort of couple of weeks, but still uh, sort of lagging behind. Um, Auckland is still in a level three lockdown, so you sort of can't leave that area. But at present, the government doesn't seem to be giving any indication of when things will be opening up. Um, they're still just talking about a high vaccine uh, uh, rate. Um, now, but is that sort of 85, 90 or 95 percent? That's only drawing a little bit of criticism out there and it's just going to be interesting to see how it sort of plays through. Because certainly tourism is a major uh, income source for New Zealand and, you know, without the international borders, it really does sort of struggle, certainly in hospitality and the tourism industry. Even with the Australians coming over, you know, it would give a little bit of a boost, but at present that's all on hold. Now, obviously, it's still pretty tough out there for investors looking for income. These record low interest rates, you know, really, uh, really struggling out there on the income front. A couple of recent issues in the uh, sort of fixed interest space have been sort of a five plus five. So it's a fixed rate for five years and then reset again after five years for a further five years. So if you are looking for income, you know, there's plenty of alternatives out there available. Um, go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz. Lots of interesting articles and we look forward to speaking to you soon.